So a lot of people ask me, what apps do I actually use on a day-to-day -day basis? And what are my favorite apps on my Mac? So in this video, I'll be talking about what apps I use on a day-to-day -day basis for things like creating content, note-taking, and other things like that. So let's get into it right now. The first app that I love to use and probably is one of my favorite ones is going to be Notion. What I use Notion specifically for is going to be what you see on the screen right now. So I primarily use it for video ideas, writing my scripts. I also take notes on this thing which is super, super helpful. So if you guys haven't been catching that, I've been taking HTML and CSS notes because I've been going back and forth between using frameworks and vanilla stuff. And right now I want to focus more on vanilla, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So HTML has a great like UI and just overall ease of use when it comes to taking notes. As you can see here, like most of these are screenshots from things that I actually read on like articles and stuff. So I'm able to like just take screenshots, plug them into my notes and then also write in between them. So it's very, very easy for me to read and go back and refer to my notes should I need them ever in the future. As far as task lists, I also do use it from time to time for creating tasks. So if you can see here, sometimes I'll just have a little small tasks here and there that I need to do and remember. So I will be doing these task lists sometimes in Notion, but most of the time I usually use my phone and the built-in notes app for tasks. On the computer, I do use it from time to time, but not often. Here you can kind of see my video project tracker where I keep track of all my videos, ideas for videos that I have. As you can see, I have a lot going on. Here's the status so I can kind of keep track of what I'm doing for those videos. Some are still ideas, some have been published already, some I'm scripting, I could be filming them for a video and here I will tag them put a publish date and video number just to keep track again of what videos I'm planning on putting out or have already done so. My next app that I use primarily, again, like this, like I said, for the task lists, I don't use Notion all that often. I use it sometimes, but for the most part, I actually use Reminders, which is the built-in Reminders app for, for Apple products. So on the iPhone and on my Mac and sometimes on my iPad, I'll bust this open and I will use my Reminders. It's just a nice built-in UI and built-in way for me to keep track of things that I need to be doing. So there are a couple of things that I need to be doing here. And you know, as they get done, I just check them off and then go from there. So this is definitely, those two are definitely a must have when it comes to staying on track, taking notes and being organized when it comes to creating content and other things that I need to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Now for emails, I actually use a client called Spark. So Spark is a great email client. It's free and I use it primarily only because it has a great way of organizing things for me. They have this thing called the smart inbox. So it organizes things from, you know, the categories of people, notifications, newsletters, and then everything I've seen they throw down here. So it's awesome. It has a built-in calendar. So if I have any other tasks that I need to do, then they will show up here. It syncs with my Gmail, but I also have my other Chow Codes domain that comes in here as well. So I'm able to send off emails through that alias and have it all on one client. I can have other folders. Here I have my collabs folder where I'll throw in brand deals or other collaborations that I want to be doing. Those go in those folders. All in all, Spark is a great client. I also have it on my phone and use it pretty much every day to stay on track look at what's incoming and the sorting that comes with this app is amazing. It's super, super easy, super, super clean. And I could not function without this. I could use the built-in Gmail client, but I find this to be a lot cleaner and a lot simpler to use for email purposes. Now, as far as maintenance and performance, I actually use an app which who are kindly paying me to say this, but I also have used them prior to this. And I find this to be a great application to use if you are on a Mac and are looking to clean up some of the storage and speed up your laptop or Mac in general. Clean My Mac X is definitely going to be the one that you want to get. I swear I've been using this for the longest time. Even when I had older MacBooks on older versions of Clean My Mac, I use this all the time. I used it for cleaning out junk, looking up email attachments that I had downloaded previously but don't need anymore, cleaning up my trash bin when I forget to recycle that, or just use it to overall optimize the laptop and make sure that I'm 
free of bugs, malware, viruses, whatever the case may be, Clean My Mac is going to be a piece of software that keeps my laptop running at its fastest and helps me clean up some of those files that I definitely don't need to speed up and increase the storage so that I can have more room for the incoming videos and the incoming images that I'm taking on a day-to-day -day basis. It's super, super easy to use. Literally, all you have to do is scan. This is a quick and smart scan, so it's not going to you know, be as extensive as if you were to do some sort of like deep scan, but this definitely does help. So it shows you how many files you need to do in order to clean up, what large and old files you haven't been using based off of the date that you opened them or and or downloaded them. And then it also determines some potential threats on your system to make sure that you are always safe at all times. So if you are looking for a client that I would recommend at the most highest, Clean My Mac is going to be that one. There will be a link below for you guys to go check that out and try it if you are ever interested at all in optimizing your Mac further. The next section is going to be for content creation. So I use mainly three apps for creating content, whether it be on Instagram or YouTube. And those ones are going to be Final Cut Pro, Lightroom Classic and Adobe Audition. So the first one being Final Cut Pro, I use this almost every single day for creating content specifically for YouTube and now for the podcast. It's my go-to video editor and I haven't looked back since I switched to it. So there was a recent update, so it's gonna be a little bit different. Let me open up a previous project for you so you can see what's going on here. But like I said, I use this pretty much every day and I have so many plugins for this thing. So it's like, it, I'm grandfathered into the ecosystem now. It's clean, it's easy, it's not hard to use. And with the built-in plugins, like I was just talking about, it makes editing so much faster and the render times are just super, are super fast. Like I just can't, I don't know what else to say. It's built for Apple and that's primarily the reason why I switched from Premiere Pro over to this thing. I haven't had Final Cut Pro crash on me very often, if at all. I have only remember maybe one time that it crashed. Premiere Pro crashed on me almost all the time and I lost way too much progress in editing videos through Premiere Pro. So I just quit it all together and was just like, I will give Final Cut Pro a try. And ever since I tried it out, it has been a godsend. It's, it's worked well for me. I've learned how to use it and I can edit in it pretty efficiently now. So this is my go-to editor. It's very, very simple like syncing clips and all that is not an issue and using the timeline and things is very, very clean. So my main video editor is Final Cut Pro. To go along with that, I also use Adobe Audition. I use Adobe Audition for two tasks only. One is for the podcast. Anytime I'm editing audio before it goes out to my podcast hosting platform, I use Adobe Audition primarily to put everything into a multi-track session and then just making sure that, you know, the audio levels are fine. If there's anything that needs to be edited, those will be all fixed and ready to go. So as you can see here, this is the ways to make money as a developer episode. This is where I just kind of put it into a multi-track, make sure the audio levels are good. As you can see here, my gain was a little too high, so I turned it down, cut out some of the dead noise, and then just exported it out for the podcast. The other way that I also use Adobe Audition is going to be for extending music tracks to kind of fit the length of a video. So if I have a video that's 13 minutes and the song is only two, I use Adobe Audition to make sure that it fits that time that I need it to. So I imported this song here from downloading from Epidemic Sound. Down here, I will enable remix put in the target duration that I need, and then through some machine learning, AI magic, whatever it is, it extends the song in a smart way so that there's no like weird cuts. It goes to the, the targeted time that I need it to, then I'm able to export it, put it into my video, and I have a full rendition of that song for the time frame that I needed to, and it's beautiful. That way, I'm not going out to look for like six different songs in order to put into my video in order to fill all that dead air. So that is probably one of the most beneficial uses that I have for Adobe Audition. The last app I use for content creation is obviously going to be Lightroom Classic. I don't use Lightroom non-classic. I love the way that the classic version looks and the way that you edited it in. It's a lot, it's not that it's not a lot cleaner. 
It's just, I like the way that I edit in this thing and I learned using classic, so I always just stuck to it. I have all my presets in here, all my photos are in this library and I'm able to sync it up between my iPad and my or my laptop here. So everything is kind of in one spot. It's just awesome when it comes to editing. Obviously I post a lot of photos on Instagram. So not just for mine, but also for the gym that I work for and go to. So having this app here is, if I lost Lightroom Classic, I would probably lose my life. So this is a must have for me when it comes to content creation. Without it, I would not have my Instagram and I would not be here where I am now. So this was a essential piece of software that I need on a day-to-day -day basis in order to create content. This next section of apps that I use is going to be for coding. So there's two primary applications that I use for coding. The first one being my main IDE of choice, which is Visual Studio Code. So yes, I don't use Atom, I don't use Vim, I don't use Sublime. VS Code is going to be my main editor of choice. I will probably do a different video in terms of what extensions I use. So if you are ever curious or are curious about the extensions I use, hit me down in the comments below and I will definitely take your feedback and advice and make a video for the extensions that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. But when it comes to coding, I use this. The built-in terminal is great. The fact that I can do customizable themes, fonts, and all that kind of stuff is amazing. I've learned everything on Visual Studio Code. It supports everything I need. I mainly code in React, but right now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I am coding in vanilla HTML, CSS, and JavaScript at this moment. So as you can see here, I have you know some basic CSS and an HTML file. I just did a live stream this morning about adding all my JavaScript but I haven't pulled it yet from the repo. So this is the old version. I just instantiated the index.js file. So you won't see any of the JavaScript there just yet, but any project that I do is going to be on Visual Studio Code. Now, the second app that goes with that, yes, there is a built-in terminal to VS Code, but if I want to use an external one and I want something to look a little bit cleaner, I use the hyper terminal. I've customized it to have its own theme and things like that, but this is my go-to terminal. Anytime I, you know, I'm running multiple windows and I want the most space on my screen for the IDE, I'll throw up hyper and just use that in order to, you know, throw up some projects, use it for pushing and pulling or whatever it is I may need to use for Git and GitHub. All in all, I found this to be the cleanest and easiest to use and most customizable in terms of any of the terminals out there. I used iTerm. Um, there was another terminal that I used out there that a lot of people recommended, but I found Hyper to be the one that I actually enjoyed the most and stuck to up until this point. Other nice to haves that I have on this laptop is going to be Hidden Me. Hidden Me is just a little application that hides and shows desktop icon. So if I click up here and go down here, you'll see some of the other stuff that I have hidden on the desktop. And if I don't want to see that, or if I'm taking an Instagram shot, I will just hide those desktop icons and you will not see them. So that, that is one of the better applications that I have in terms of just cleaning up my, my laptop to make sure I'm not just cluttered physically on the laptop and mentally up in the brain. The other one is Alfred four. Alfred four is super, super helpful when it comes to looking up files, doing some basic math on the fly or opening up applications. So if I I wanted to open maybe Streamlabs, like I can just look that up, or if I wanna do some math, so four plus four, it'll tell me eight as the answer, you know? So Alfred four is probably one of the more helpful ones. I, I like it better than using Spotlight. Um, Alfred four is just kind of like the better version of Spotlight. So if you're ever looking for a replacement for that, Alfred four is probably the way to go. The other one I have is iStats, which is up here again in the taskbar. So iStats is what I use in order to track and monitor my CPU usage. So if there's anything in the background, Google Chrome that is taking up and hogging a lot of my CPU. I will know exactly what it is and try to kill it or fix that. Uh, I also use it to see memory usage in terms of RAM and then also keep track of my SSD and see if I'm clogging up the space and if I need to free something up, then at that point I'll open up, clean my Mac, clean out some of the stuff and free up some storage space. The other nice one I like to use is Magnet. So Magnet here is a pretty much window management application. So if I have, you know, this ultra wide, this 49 inch ultra wide, and I need to split monitors evenly and easily, I can do that with magnet with some shortcuts. So if I, let's say I wanted to open VS code and hyper again. So if I wanted to do that, then I can hold 
this right here, it'll split it this right here, I'll split it and it will, you know, split these windows evenly in the way and orientation that I'd like it to. So if I click on hyper, then I can choose from this drop down here of what orientations I'd like it to. So let's just say right two thirds, then I will give it the right two thirds. So it's a nice application to have, especially with an ultra wide, or if I just wanted to evenly split windows like you can on Windows 10 natively, this is the way to do it. So those are some of the apps that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions on the apps or any recommendations to improve my workflow, hit me down in the comments. I would greatly like to connect with you guys there. Other than that, I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out.